Good morning. As promised, I'm going to start with the story. Then when I'm done with the story, I'll switch the recording to record class. If you're not into the story, you can feel free to go ahead and open up your work and get started ahead of us. We'll be analyzing that second poem today. So I figure the best first story to tell you is about how I grew up. And as you can see from the slide here, I grew up on a family farm. So first off, in your mind, see if you can pronounce this. Those of you who took German probably can. D-E-I-C-H-E-L-B-O-H-R-E-R. -E -E -R. That is my mother's maiden name. It's also the road I grew up on. And that's, here's how you pronounce it, Dykelbor. So whenever like credit card companies or other companies want a secure name to ask you about, I usually put that one, mother's maiden name. No one's gonna guess that, typically. Imagine being a dyslexic kid and having to spell this name. Yikes, it, it was kind of rough. When I was born, we lived in Wisconsin Dells. Understandably, my mom wanted to move away. She wanted to be independent. My dad really missed home though. They're both from two towns that are next to one another in Wisconsin, in the La Crosse area. And he, he really wanted to move back. What finally convinced her, at least as my dad told me, was I would hang around with the trailer park kids because we lived in a trailer park in the Dells right next to a Burger King. And my mom had noticed my behavior was getting kind of aggressive. So I would hang out with these older kids. And I, you know what happens when you hang out with older people. It, you learn things that you may not have thought of on your own. I guess one day I came in, just all, it looked like I had been in a fight, all tussled up, and, you know, spitting mad. And I told her that some people got to get got. So that was an, a reason to move. No one wants to hear their four-year-old talk like a little thug. When I moved to the farm when I was four, so it was me, my dad, my infant brother, and my mom. So I went from having a tiny little family to having this expanded, extended family. And it was amazing. To a four-year-old, a farm is magic. There's baby kitties. We had a woods. We had so many acres. And there were grandmas everywhere. My mom's mom my grandpa's mom so my great grandma her mom or my grandma's mom you get the idea there were two great grandmothers and grandparents on the place and i just i wasn't used to getting that much attention i think and i really liked it i also really liked both of my grandparents because they taught me so many things my grandmother how to be kind but firm like you can still get what you want you don't have to be mean about it she taught me that she also taught me how to bake i have so many wonderful memories of that farmhouse kitchen and it sometimes surprises people that i can bake i don't know why but that's where i learned it my grandpa my papa i never called them grandma and grandpa i called them mimi and papa so my papa taught me so much about nature because he was a farmer so he taught me about nature and the weather and about different animals and Oh, I just loved spending time with him. He also taught me about love. He would tell these great stories about what it was like when he first was dating my grandma, about how he didn't have a car. So one day he drove his dad's tractor all the way over to her farm. That's some Wisconsin courtship right there. But I loved hearing his stories. He had a mischief about him. He still does. But he had a mischief about him that I really identified with when I was younger. He'd get this twinkle in his eye when he would talk about how much he loved my grandma. So I got a great example every day of what real love is. I saw them work it out all the time. My great grandmas taught me also how to love reading. Both of them love reading, and they both were really funny. They taught me how to find the funny in life. That was their goal, find the funny. Doesn't matter what's happening, find the funny. So I'm really lucky that I got to grow up on a farm, and that's how I'll start to end this. I know at times my mom probably felt trapped because there was a lot more scrutiny because there were all these people on the farm that could watch you know, how she was raising her kids, and everybody had an opinion. It's another good thing about growing up on the farm. I learned how to express a different opinion from someone and still love and respect them. So here's what happened to the farm in the end. And that's how I'll end this story. 
my grandfather sold the farm. He went and told all of us, but he sold the farm to pay for my grandma's chemotherapy. So once again, he showed his love. We were sad to see it go. It currently is a housing development called Westwood Hills. So places where I learned to hunt is where there's like two houses now, our sledding hill, now a house, that kind of thing. So it's weird to go back there. Currently, I have, and this is a weird item, I have a brick from the original house. I kept it wrapped in the paper my grandma kept it in just to kind of protect it. But I haul this thing <laughs> to every move. Anywhere I move, I take this brick with me, which may be silly, but I just like having a piece of the house. So there you go. I hope you have a similar story from your childhood that just makes you happy. So let's switch recording here.